How's it going, men and women of God, those growing every single day in Christ? Today, we're going to be discussing the things at which we need to eliminate so we can actually receive God's will within our life freely, fully, and unobstructed, and how to act this out accordingly. So the presence and power at which the Holy Spirit provides, acting within our life unobstructed, peace, power, presence, and clarity, all received when we are fully in atonement toward our Father, which is in heaven. So go ahead and leave a like, comment, share, subscribe really quick. I've got some notes on the side at which I'm going to deliver real quick. And it will help me actually convey this message because I got a lot of verses over here as well in relation to what we're discussing. So first, let's go with this one. Um, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. God. Why is this the gift of God? Because he's the one who has created the works which we're to do. He's the one who's ordained us within his will, and he's the one who's created you. Therefore, he is creating the works at which you're to walk in. And this is not of works. Being saved is not of works. It's not the works at which save us. The works are only a reflection of a changed heart in Christ. They are just as important as our salvation because they're a direct reflection of it. You know, there are so many verses at which say, um, when your faith is empty, when we're not filling it up with good deeds and actions unto Christ Jesus, for the sufferings which he laid on the cross, partaking in the sufferings of Christ, there's another verse for this as well, then we are not fully receiving the promise of his will within our lives. If we're not acting it out accordingly, if we're not doing what he has put in our hearts in order to do his perfect and pleasing will, those who say, Lord, Lord, will not all enter the kingdom of God. It is he who, do, who does the will of our Father in heaven, his perfect and pleasing will according to what is written in the heavens. So God hath ordained these works so that we should walk in them. And that's Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. A lot of Christians like to leave the last half of this verse out. But first, we must begin to use these tools to gain the correct direction and discernment of what we should and shouldn't be doing so we can eliminate anything that would further tempt us to sin. And the Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds in Christ Jesus. This basically means don't conform to the things within the world, the pleasures, feelings, and possessions thereof that are passing away, that are fleeting, that will one day cease to exist. And if we're not being transformed by the renewal of our minds in Christ Jesus, if we're we're not taking up our cross as a sign of suffering unto him, then we're not going to be renewed. We're not going to be, um, we're not going to be lifted up out of the pattern of this world and put onto Christ Jesus with that new spiritual mind. So basically that's what that means in Romans 12 too. So then you will be able to test what God's will is. And this is the rest of this verse, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And why it's so important to act this out is th through works um, is because when we have that transformed mind in Christ, when we have that transformed heart in Christ, then this is only a direct byproduct of this. So this renewal helps us to operate in one mind of Christ. As we know, the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. That's James 1.8. Then once we discern what is of God's will for our lives, we can begin to do the will of our Father in heaven. And this verse I, I referenced earlier, Whosoever say to me, Lord, Lord, shall not all enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. And that's Matthew 7.21. He who does the will of the Father earns the seat. So if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's what God says in John 14.15. And this is how we truly gain our sanctification, salvation, abide within the Spirit. So we're walking in the Spirit so we do not fulfill the lustful desires of the flesh as listed in Galatians and we can actually fully receive his will. So uh, we can also flee from the sins within the world for good. And as the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. These are, these are the boundaries that we need to build uh, and in order to order ourselves in such a way so that the enemy cannot infiltrate through his devices. So let's observe a little bit further, you know, how we can actually obtain the spiritual discernment. Um, when we're operating in one mind of Christ, and we're not doing things that are of the world. We can actually receive his, his spirit unobstructed. Therefore, this guides us into all truth. This leads us into all truth. This is the spirit of truth as Jesus describes. And this is having the Holy Spirit within us guiding us into all truth. So, um, you know, I think I'm going to leave this video at, at uh, this, you guys. 
And uh, I'm definitely going to come back with a part two relating to this because this topic is greatly important and needs to be discussed more. But if you like the video, leave a comment, share, like, subscribe. I don't want to keep this video too long today. Um, but God bless every single one of you in Jesus name. I'm also offering sexual sin support sessions. So if you are struggling in any regard in, in any area of your sexuality within your life, go ahead and book one of those calls in my about page. Also offering tons of books. You can go ahead and check those out as well. And if you just want to simply support the ministry, my PayPal link is there as well. God bless every single one of you in Jesus mighty name. Amen.